Agrippina the Elder, Agrippina the Elder, Latin, Vipsania Agrippina, Classical Latin, circa 14 BC to AD 33, commonly referred to as Agrippina the Elder, Latin, Agrippina Maior, was a prominent member of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. She was born in circa 14 BC the daughter of Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, a close supporter of Rome's first emperor Augustus, and Augustus' daughter Julia the Elder. At the time of her birth, her brothers Lucius and Gaius were the adoptive sons of Augustus and were his heirs until their deaths in AD 2 and 4, respectively. Following their deaths, her cousin Germanicus was made the adoptive son of Tiberius as part of Augustus' succession scheme in the adoptions of AD 4 in which Tiberius was adopted by Augustus. As a corollary to the adoption, Agrippina was wed to Germanicus in order to bring him closer to the Julian family. She is known to have traveled with him throughout his career, taking her children everywhere they went. In AD 14, Germanicus was deployed in Gaul as governor and general. While there, the late Augustus sent her son Gaius to her unspecified location. She liked to dress him in a little soldier's outfit complete with boots for which Gaius earned the nickname Caligula, Little Boots. After three years in Gaul they returned to Rome and her husband was awarded a triumph on 26 May AD 17 to commemorate his victories. The following year, Germanicus was sent to govern over the eastern provinces. While Germanicus was active in his administration, the governor of Syria Gnaeus Calpurnius Piso began feuding with him. During the feud, her husband died of illness on 10 October AD 19. Germanicus was cremated in Antioch and she transported his ashes to Rome where they were interred at the mausoleum of Augustus. Agrippina was vocal in claiming her husband was murdered to promote Tiberius' son Drusus Julius Caesar, Drusus the Younger, as heir. Following the model of her grandmother Livia, she spent the time following Germanicus' death supporting the cause of her sons Nero and Drusus Caesar. This put her and her sons at odds with the powerful Praetorian prefect Lucius Ilius Sianus, who would begin eliminating their supporters with accusations of treason and sexual misconduct in AD 26. Her family's rivalry with Sianus would culminate with her and Nero's exile in AD 29. Nero was exiled to Pontia and she was exiled to the island of Pandateria, where she would remain until her death by starvation in AD 33. Following the Roman custom of parents and children sharing the same nomen and cognomen, women in the same family would often share the same name. Accordingly, Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa had many relatives who shared the name Vipsania Agrippina. To distinguish Marcus Agrippa's daughter from his granddaughter, historians refer to his daughter as Latin Agrippina Maior, literally Agrippina the Elder. Likewise, Agrippina's daughter is referred to as Agrippina Minor, literally Agrippina the Younger. Like her father, Agrippina the Elder avoided her cognomen and was never called Vipsania. Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa was an early supporter of Augustus, then Octavius, during the final war of the Roman Republic that ensued as a result of the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BC. His father, Lucius Vipsanius Agrippa, was a key general in Augustus' armies, commanding troops in pivotal battles against Mark Antonian Sextus Pompeius. From early in the emperor's reign, Agrippa was trusted to handle affairs in the eastern provinces and was even given the signet ring of Augustus, who appeared to be on his deathbed in 23 BC, a sign that he would become preen keps were Augustus to die. It is probable that he was to rule until the emperor's nephew, Marcus Claudius Marcellus, came of age. However, Marcellus died that year of an illness that became an epidemic in Rome. Now, with Marcellus dead, Augustus arranged for the marriage of Agrippa to his daughter Julia the Elder who was previously the wife of Marcellus. Agrippa was given Tribunitia Potestas, the Tribunician power, in 18 BC, a power that only the emperor and his immediate heir could hope to attain. The Tribunician power allowed him to control the Senate, and it was first given to Julius Caesar. Agrippa acted as tribune in the Senate to pass important legislation and, though he lacked some of the emperor's power and authority, he was approaching the position of co-regent. After the birth of Agrippa's second son, Lucius, in 17 BC, Lucius and his brother Gaius were adopted together by Augustus. Around the time of their adoption in the summer, Augustus held the fifth ever Ludius Aeculares, secular games. Cassius Dio says the adoption of the boys coupled with the games served to introduce a new era of peace, the Pax Augusta. It is not known what Agrippa thought of their adoption, however, following their adoption, Agrippa was dispatched to govern the eastern provinces, bringing his family with him. Agrippina was born in 14 BC to Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa and Julia the Elder, before their return to Rome in 13 BC. She had five siblings, a half-sister Vipsania Agrippina, 
three brothers, Gaius, Lucius, and Postumus Agrippa, all were adopted by Augustus. Gaius and Lucius were adopted together following Lucius' birth in 17 BC, Postumus in AD 4, and a sister who shared the same mother, Julia the Younger. She was a prominent member of the Julio Claudian dynasty. On her mother's side, she was the younger granddaughter of Augustus. She was the sister in law of Tiberius by her half sister's marriage to him, and of Claudius, the brother of her husband Germanicus. Her son Gaius, better known as Caligula, would be the fourth emperor, and her grandson Nero would be the last emperor of the dynasty. In 13 BC, her father returned to Rome and was promptly sent to Pannonia to suppress a rebellion. Agrippa arrived there that winter, in 12 BC, but the Pannonians gave up that same year. Agrippa returned to Campania in Italy, where he fell ill and died soon after. After her father's death, she spent the rest of her childhood in Augustus' household where access to her was strictly controlled. Some of the currency issued in 13 to 12 BC, the Aurei and Denarii, make it clear that her brothers Gaius and Lucius were Augustus' intended heirs. Their father was no longer available to assume the reins of power if the emperor were to die and Augustus had to make it clear who his intended heirs were in case anything should happen. Lucius and Gaius' military and political careers would steadily advance until their deaths in AD 2 and 4, respectively. The death of her brothers meant that Augustus had to find other heirs. Although he initially considered Agrippina's second cousin Germanicus a potential heir for a time, Livia convinced Augustus to adopt Tiberius, Livia's son from her first marriage with Tiberius Claudius Nero. Although Augustus adopted Tiberius, it was on condition that Tiberius first adopt Germanicus so that Germanicus would become second in the line of succession. It was a corollary to the adoption, probably in the next year, that Agrippina was married to Germanicus. By her husband Germanicus, she had nine children Nero Julius Caesar, Drusus Julius Caesar, Tiberius Julius Caesar a child of unknown name, normally referenced as Ignotus, Gaius the Elder, the Emperor Caligula, Gaius the Younger, the Empress Agrippina the Younger, Julia Drusilla, and Julia Lavilla. Only six of his children came of age, Tiberius and the Ignotus died as infants, and Gaius the Elder in his early childhood. Her husband's career in the military began in 86, with the Batonian War in Pannonia and Dalmatia. Throughout Germanicus' military career, Agrippina is known to have traveled with her husband and their children. Germanicus' career advanced steadily as he advanced in ranks following the Cursus Honorum until, in AD 12, he was made consul. The following year, he was given command over Gaul and the forces on the Rhine, totaling eight legions. On 18th of May AD 14, her one-year-old son Gaius was sent by Augustus from Rome to join her in Gaul. She was pregnant at the time and, while Germanicus was collecting taxes across Gaul, she remained at an unspecified separate location, presumably for her safety. Augustus sent her a letter with her son's party, which read later that year, on 19th of August, Augustus died while away in Campania. As a result, Tiberius was made princeps. While Germanicus was administering the oath of fealty to Tiberius, a mutiny began among the forces on the Rhine. During the mutiny, Agrippina brought out their sixth child, Gaius, and made preparations to take him away to a safer town nearby. He was in a full army outfit including the legionary hobnailed boots, Caligae. These military booties earned Gaius the nickname Caligula, lit. Little boots, and garnered sympathy for Agrippina and the child among the soldiery. Tacitus attributes her actions as having quelled the mutiny, Tacitus, Annals 1.40-4. Once the mutiny was put to an end, Germanicus allowed the soldiers to deal with the ringleaders, which they did with brutal severity. He then led them against the Germanic tribes, perhaps in an effort to prevent future mutiny. Germanicus would remain in Gaul fighting against the Germanic tribes until AD 16, at which time he was recalled to Rome by Tiberius. His campaigns won him much renown among the Roman people, and he was awarded a triumph on 26 May AD 17. In AD 18, Agrippina left for the eastern provinces with her family. Germanicus was sent the east to govern the provinces, the same assignment her father was given years earlier. Agrippina was pregnant on their journey east and, on the way to Syria, she gave birth to her youngest daughter Julia Lavilla on the island of Lesbos. Inscriptions celebrating her fertility have been found on the island. Tiberius sent Gnaeus Calpurnius Piso to assist her husband, naming him governor of Syria. During their time there, Germanicus was active in his administration of the eastern regions. 
Piso did not get along well with Germanicus and their relationship only got worse. In AD 19, Germanicus ordered Piso to leave the province, which Piso began to do. On his way back to Rome, Piso stopped at the island of Kos off the coast of Syria. Around that time Germanicus fell ill and he died on 10 October AD 19 at Antioch. Rumors spread of Piso poisoning her husband on the emperor's orders. After Germanicus' cremation in the Forum of Antioch, Agrippina personally carried the ashes of her husband to Rome. The transportation of the ashes witnessed national mourning. She landed at the port of Brundisium in southern Italy where she was met with huge crowds of sympathizers. From Brundisium, a Praetorian escort was provided for her by the emperor in respect to her rank as the wife of a governor general. As she passed each town, the people and local magistrates came out to show their respect. Drusus the Younger, son of Tiberius, Claudius, and the consul's journey to join the procession as well? Once she made it to Rome, her husband's ashes were interred at the mausoleum of Augustus. Tiberius and Livia did not make an appearance. Her marriage to Germanicus had served to unite the imperial family. Agrippina may have suspected Tiberius' involvement in the death of her husband and, with Germanicus dead, she no longer had any familial ties to the emperor. Historian Richard Alston says it is likely that either Tiberius or Livia were behind the exile of Agrippina's half-sister in the death of Postumus. He notes the death of Agrippina's mother, who starved herself to death amidst her exile in AD 14, linking her death to Tiberius' disdain for her. Agrippina was vocal about her feelings claiming that Germanicus was murdered to promote Drusus the Younger as Tiberius' heir, and worried that the birth of the younger Drusus' twin sons would displace her own sons in the line of succession. Her fears proved to be unfounded, with her son Nero receiving the toga virilis, toga of manhood, from Tiberius and the younger Drusus on 7 June AD 20. Further, Nero was promised the office of quaestor five years before the ordinary age and was wed to Tiberius' granddaughter Julia. Agrippina's second oldest son Drusus was given similar honors and was also promised the office of quaestor in advance when he reached his 14th year in AD 23. At about this time, Tiberius' Praetorian prefect Sianus was becoming powerful in Rome and began feuding with Drusus the Younger. While the exact causes of the feud are unknown, it ended when the younger Drusus died of seemingly natural causes on 14 September AD 23. After the death of Tiberius' son, Agrippina wanted to advance the careers of her sons, who were all potential heirs for Tiberius. To achieve this, Agrippina presented the great cameo of France to Tiberius. It was a personalized gift that positioned the family of Germanicus around the emperor. The work was designed to convince Tiberius to choose her children as his heirs. It is likely she was the one who commissioned the great cameo of France. Ultimately, the death of Tiberius' son elevated her own children to the position of heirs. Her sons were the logical choice, because they were the sons of Germanicus and Tiberius' grandsons were too young. Nero was becoming popular in the Senate due in part, Tacitus says, to his resemblance with his father. The rise of her children was threatening to Sianus' position. Resultantly, Sianus began spreading rumors about Agrippina in the imperial court. The coming years were marked with increasing hostility between Sianus and Agrippina and her sons. This effectively caused factions to rise in the aristocracy between her family and Sianus. On New Year's Day, AD 24, Sianus had the priests and magistrates add prayers for the health of Nero and Drusus in addition to those normally offered to the emperor on that day. Tiberius was not happy with this and he voiced his displeasure in the Senate. In addition, he questioned the priests of the Palatine. Some of the priests who offered the prayers were relatives of Agrippina and Germanicus. This made Tiberius suspicious of her and marked a change in his attitude toward her and her older sons, but not Caligula. In AD 25, Sianus requested Lavilla's hand in marriage. Lavilla was a niece of the emperor, which would have made him a member of the imperial family. While this did make his ambitions clear, his request was denied. The loss may have been huge for Sianus had the dissensions in the imperial household note been deteriorating. Relations were so bad that Agrippina refused to eat at Tiberius' dinner parties for fear of being poisoned. She also asked Tiberius if she could be allowed to remarry, which he also refused. If either of them were allowed to remarry it would have threatened the line of succession that Tiberius was comfortable with. By refusing Siana's request, Tiberius made it clear he was content with the children of Germanicus and his own grandchildren being his successors. Had Siana's married Lavilla their children would have provided another line of possible successors. 
The implication of Agrippina's request was that she need aid a man from outside the imperial family to serve as protector and stepfather of possible imperial heirs, a powerful position. It was also an implied reprimand. Tiberius was meant to be the guardian of the imperial family. Tiberius was in a tough position. He was faced with a conflict between his family and his friend. His solution was surprising. In AD 26, left Rome altogether and retired to the island of Capri in the Bay of Naples. He cut himself off from the factions altogether and abandoned politics. He left Rome in the care of Sianus. This allowed Sianus to freely attack his rivals. With Tiberius away from Rome, the city would see a rise of politically motivated trials on the part of Sianus and his supporters against Agrippina and her associates. Many of her friends and associates were subsequently accused of miestas, treason, by the growing number of accusers. It was also common to see charges of sexual misconduct and corruption. In AD 27, Agrippina found herself placed under house arrest in her suburban villa outside Herculaneum. In AD 28, the Senate voted that altars to Claymantia, Mercy, and Amicidia, friendship, be raised. At that time, Claymantia was considered a virtue of their ruling class, for only the powerful could give clemency. The altar of Amicidia was flanked by statues of Sianus and Tiberius. By this time, his association with Tiberius was such that there were those in Roman society who erected statues in his honor and gave prayers and sacrifices in his honor. Sianus' birthday was honored as if he were a member of the imperial family. According to Richard Alston, Sianus' association with Tiberius must have at least indicated to the people that he would be further elevated. Sianus did not begin his final attack on Agrippina until after the death of Livia in AD 29. Tacitus reports a letter being sent to the Senate from Tiberius denouncing Agrippina for her arrogance and prideful attitude, and Nero for engaging in shameful sexual activities. The Senate would not begin highly unpopular prosecutions against her or her son until it received clear instructions from Tiberius to do so. Despite public outcry, Agrippina and Nero were declared public enemies, hosts following a repeat of the accusations by the emperor. They were both exiled. Nero to Pontia where he was killed or encouraged to commit suicide in AD 31, and Agrippina to the island of Pandateria, the same place her mother was exiled to. Sidonius says that while on the island of Pandateria, she lost an eye when she was beaten by a centurion. She would remain on the island until her death in AD 33. Accounts of her death vary. She is said to have died from starvation, but it is not certain whether or not it was self-imposed. Tacitus says food was withheld from her in an effort to make her death seem like a suicide. Her son Drusus was later also exiled on charges of sexual misdemeanors. Sionis remained powerful until his sudden downfall and summary execution in October AD 31, just after the death of Nero, the exact cause for which remains unclear. Alston suggests that Sionis may have been acting in Tiberius' favor to remove Germanicus' family from power noting that Agrippina and Nero's brother Drusus were left in exile even after Sianus' death. The deaths of Agrippina's older sons elevated her youngest son Caligula to the position of successor and he became princeps when Tiberius died in AD 37. Drusus the younger's son Tiberius Gemellus was summoned to Capri by his father Tiberius, where he and Caligula were made joint heirs. When Caligula assumed power he made Gemellus his adopted son, but Caligula soon had Gemellus killed for plotting against him. After he became emperor, Caligula took on the role of a dutiful son and brother in a public show of pietas, piety. He went out to the islands of Pontia and Pandataria in order to recover the remains of Agrippina and Nero. It was not easy to recover Nero's bones as they were scattered and buried. Moreover, he had a stormy passage, however, the difficulty in his task made his devotion seem even greater. The ashes were brought to Ostia, from where they were carried up the Tiber and brought to the campus Martius from where equestrians placed them on Briarstow join the ashes of Germanicus in the mausoleum of Augustus. The move was reminiscent of when Agrippina carried the ashes of her husband just over 17 years earlier. Agrippina's funerary urn still survives. Agrippina was fiercely independent, a trait she shared with her mother. Dio described her as having ambitions to match her pedigree. However, Anthony Barrett notes that Agrippina was fully aware that a woman in ancient Rome could not hold power in her own right. Instead, Agrippina followed the model of Livia in promoting the careers of her children. She and her daughter, Agrippina the Younger, are both described as being equally ambitious for their sons. Whereas the elder Agrippina's son failed to become emperor, the younger Agrippina's son, also named Nero, succeeds. In a contrast, 
Tacitus has Agrippina the elder merely standing on a bridge waving the soldiers pissing by, whereas her daughter eclipses her by presiding over a military tribunal and accepting gifts from foreign ambassadors. Tacitus also records serious tension between Agrippina and Livia. He describes Livia as having visited stepmotherly provocations on Agrippina. He says of Agrippina, were it not that through her moral integrity and love for her husband she converted an otherwise ungovernable temper to the good, Tacitus, Annals 1.33. Despite being sympathetic to her as a victim of imperial oppression, he uses expressions like excitable, arrogant, proud, fierce, obstinate, and ambitious to describe Agrippina. His comments are echoed by other sources. Historian Lindsay Powell says Agrippina enjoyed a normal marriage and continued to show her devotion to Germanicus after his death. He says she was regarded by the Roman people as, quoting Tacitus, the glory of the country, the sole surviving offspring of Augustus, the solitary example of the good old times. Alston cautions against accepting the stories of Agrippina's feud with Sianus at face value. As these accounts reflect a tradition hostile to Tiberius and Sainaus. They may have been circulated by Agrippina's supporters or they may have emerged after Sejanus fall in AD 31. He adds, these stories are plausible, though not certain to be true. Augustus was proud of Agrippina. Suetonius claims that Augustus wrote her a letter praising her intellect and directing her education. Suetonius also records that Augustus, who held strict views on self restraint and respectable speech, cautioned Agrippina not to speak offensively. When she next appears, she is being chastised by Tiberius in Greek for making irritating remarks, and the tone of the Greek verse quoted by Tiberius suggests that she should have heeded the advice of her grandfather not to speak offensively. The Annals of Tacitus is a history of the Julio-Claudian dynasty beginning with the death of Augustus. In it, he portrays women as having a profound influence in politics. The women of the imperial family in particular are depicted by Tacitus as having a notable prominence in the public sphere as well as possessing a ferocity and ambition with which they pursue it. Tacitus presents them as living longer than the imperial men and thus being more wise as they advance in age. Among the most broad of his portrayals is that of Agrippina. He emphasizes their role in connecting genetically back to Augustus, a significant factor in the marriages of the emperors and princes of the dynasty. The Annals repeatedly has Agrippina competing for influence with Tacitus simply because she is related to Augustus biologically. Tacitus presents Agrippina as being kindred to aristocratic males, and has her reversing gender roles, which showcases her assumption of male auctoritas, authority, with metaphors of her dressing and undressing. In an example of Agrippina assuming auctoritas, he says. Using the above epithet, femina, ingens animi, a woman, great for her courage. He assigns a haughty attitude to Agrippina that compels her to explore the affairs of men. He records her as having reversed the natural order of things when she quelled the mutiny of the Rhine in AD 14. In so doing, he describes her as having usurped her husband's power, a power rightfully belonging only to a general. Portraits of Roman women from the Julio Claudian dynasty display a freer hair treatment than those of traditional Roman men and are more keen on the sensitivity of recording on different textures. These changes in style serve to make reproducing them more popular in the mid-1st century AD. Reproductions of her image would continue to be made into that period. In the portrait, she is given a youthful face despite the fact that she lived to middle age. Agrippina's hair is a mass of curls that covers both sides of her head and is long going down to her shoulders. Her portraiture can be contrasted with Thalflidia who had a more austere Augustan hairstyle. There are three different periods during the 1st century AD when portraits were created for Agrippina, at the time of her marriage to Germanicus, which Medea the mother of a potential emperor, when her son Caligula came into power in AD 37, and collected her ashes from the island of Pandateria for Relocatianto the mausoleum of Augustus, and at the time of Claudius' marriage to Antonia Minor, who wanted to connect himself to the lineage of Augustus by evoking Agrippina's image. Coins and inscriptions cannot act as a method of discerning her age, because her hairstyle remains unchanged in all the representations. The easiest phase of portraits to identify are those dating to the time of Caligula, when a fair abundance of coins were minted with an image of his mother one them. It is a posthumous portrait of her with idealized features. In the face following Claudius' marriage, her features are made to more closely resemble pose of her daughter. The goal was to strengthen Agrippina the Younger's connection with her mother. Finally, the portraits of her dating to the time of Tiberius are still idealized, but not as much as those from the period of Caligula's reign.
Images of Agrippina from this period are the most lifelike. Agrippina has been depicted in many works of art, the most notable of which include. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.